I really like the subject of Scientology, mm -hmm. but a lot of it has been made already. You mm -hmm. know, there's, there's been many documentaries and mm -hmm. many hours of film. And why did you want to do another one? I really wanted to know. I knew that uh, on, the, on the outside it seemed weird and that m many people said things about it that sounded really weird, right? Yeah. Um, and I guess I wanted to see from the inside what it was really like and see in what way um, the things on the outside that seemed weird, in what way they sort of made sense when you were in it. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. many of the things that I do or have done over the years, they've been about subjects that are controversial in some way, um, even practices that might seem or might be immoral or questionable or just non-mainstream. I was interested in what they call fair game, yeah. where um, it's a Scientology practice. It's debatable. Sometimes it's claimed that they don't do it anymore. But the idea that if someone leaves Scientology and criticizes Scientology, yeah. that you can, uh, that, they, that they are declared fair game and you can use all kinds of tricks to make their life uncomfortable. Yeah. I think the idea quite quickly became clear that Marty Rathbun would be a key Yeah, figure. why him? <coughs> because you've spoken to more ex-Scientologists. Mm. So why did you choose him to be your right hand? Well, almost? Marty, I think he had a couple of things, but one is that he was so senior. He was the number two inside Scientology, so he says anyway, yeah. and I have no reason to disbelieve him. He was um, <clears throat> the right hand man of the church number one, yeah. David Miscavige. You know, it's all very well to have an ex-Scientologist, but if it's someone who just worked packing CDs and DVDs or writing infomercials, it's not going to tell you as much about the more controversial practices. And Marty was the enforcer. You know, he was, as he says in our film, he says, I was the baddest ass dude in Scientology. He sounded a little proud when he said he that. He did, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. I think he is a little bit proud. In I, a way, yeah? Hmm. And you did also uh, some auditing with yes, Marty Rathbun. Yes, I did, yeah. I did. Yeah. And how, how was that for you? The auditing I enjoyed. What did you tell him? Um, I told them about. Cut it all out, and I wa there was. It was. It was, was. it was so. It was not interesting. I didn't cut it out because it was revealing, of me personally. It just wasn't interesting. It's just to do with things that I, um, you know, personal issues. I have the same sorts of problems everyone else does. So I was just talking about personal things that um, I thought I could use help with. And did you think it helped? Yeah, I did. Really? Mm. So that's an aspect of Scientology that. I think makes the sense. I mean, I don't know that it helped more doing it with an e-meter than it would have done without an e-meter. I mean, I think a, a sensitive, empathetic listener and, um, you know, produces results. It's the same in um, any kind of talk therapy, whether it's Freudian or Jungian or cognitive behavioral therapy. It's just a chance to um, get stuff off your chest. But what about you? So you actually did it, in a sense, for real. Yeah. yeah I How many times? I had to repeat about breaking my leg for about nine times. Why breaking your leg? Because I didn't want to tell them too much. <laughs> really? So I told them about that I, I had to take some, because that was, I, I told them that, for example, they diagnosed me with ADHD and that I had to take some, some medication. That, that can sometimes disqualify, disqualify yeah, you from receiving that's, services. I had to actually write down every medication I ever took. Mm -hmm. And when they found out that you were actually there for a story, have they released any of the contents of your PC folders? They didn't even show them to me. Right, so they I have had to do everything in my power to get half of my file, yeah. Have you got your file back? They gave it in my hands and then when I wanted to walk out the room to take it home, they... They, <laughs> they yanked it back? Yes. So, um, since, how long ago did you, go, did you publish your, um, your story about it? It was in May 2015 that we published. And, and I was inside for five months. Right. And so uh, I did some auditing sessions, and that's when uh, I was audited by an 11 year old. And that's. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you have you heard stories about children working in Scientology? Yes. What did you think of that? Interesting, but I didn't, you know, it wasn't our focus, but I thought that they had stopped doing that. Nah. They haven't? No. An 11 year old auditor? Yeah. Asking you about what? Traumatic things mm -hmm. in my past. I could give him anything, but I, I chose to speak about asthma really? because I thought, you know, it's better for him to, um, That's to odd, not get... How could an 11-year-old be a qualified auditor? It, it, I don't know. You tell me. What do you think? Why do they think that? I don't know. I'm very, I'm very surprised. But what reaction did you get when you published? What did they say about you? 
they weren't pleased and when the press tried to talk to them they haven't spoken to a lot of radio stations or television stations really? or, or newspapers but the reaction they gave was uh, that there's not really children auditing adults this was only like an incident where the boy just was very curious they gave him the opportunity and oh, uh, really? you know this whole story about yeah but what do you think of undercover anyway because you could have done the same i was actually expecting a little bit that mm -hmm. everything i didn't get my fingers behind would be revealed by you or something um I, I you know we talked a lot about undercover to begin with it's not my it's not a way of working that i'm comfortable with why um because I feel the need to, um, I, I guess I feel a need to, in a sense, be who I am, and you know, I want to, I want to sort of, I don't want to be in the position of feeling that I'm ever lying to someone, and I, and I don't mean to imply any criticism of of, of your way of doing things. You yeah. know, it's absolutely it's a valid. Uh, way of doing things and you know very important stories have been broken using undercover reporting but the, the, the way I report stories is is by attempting to build trust and spending time with people and I like to imagine that um, in the end uh, it's in people's interests for them to reveal their secrets you know to, to talk about their lives and what they do in an open and candid way. But I'd been worried that the Scientologists might not um, come after me. Well, in fact, they not only came after me, they revealed that they're making a film about me. Did you do it very discreet or did you actually no. put it in the same magazine where Scientology advertises? We didn't, we did, um, we never attempted to hide what we were doing. You know, it's a good point because it was the exact opposite of going undercover. We went in broad daylight, over cover, and in fact, the idea was we're going to make it in LA, not kind of needlessly, provocatively, ostentatiously but absolutely in a place where we knew um, we were likely to get noticed and that the whole of LA would be a, a sort of stage and a location for us and and my hope was always that they would take notice that we do it in such a way that word would, would reach them quite quickly yeah yeah so it would have been a nice coincidence if they happened to cro uh, to stumble over the advertisement where you were yeah looking for actors to, exactly to be miscavaged. But as far as I you know they could very well have sent a Scientology actor along yeah. to our casting and yeah. and, um, and and also conversely I don't, we always said to them look if you, we would love you to be involved and if you want I to you. if you want to come along to one of our castings or if you want to come along and do an interview and every time they show up with their cameras I say I always say stick around yeah please you knew they were you're welcome you know um, I'd, l I'd love to keep the conversation going and 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 um, because I didn't want to, in a sense, become a mirror of them. I wanted, you know, I didn't want to get into an oppositional relationship with them in, in, in a nasty way. I wanted to invite them in. Yeah. And, and, and are they still going after you now that you're finished? Because in a way, you've had to be secretive. They're secretive, and now you've had to be secretive. So in a way... Me? Yes. With going undercover? Yeah, yeah. but going undercover. In a way, you were forced to kind of uh, engage with them on their level slightly. Because they would say to you, you were dishonest. And what, how would you believe or respect a reporter who, who lies about what her intentions are, who takes part in a, a, a spiritual exercise but does it with false intentions? You know, you can't do auditing and secretly be thinking, oh, I really, I'm not interested in doing this. What I really want is to find out what's going on. No. So the challenge is to, to, for me was to try and reveal who they were without kind of becoming some version of them. And who are they then, in your words? Well, I'm talking about the Sea Org now, which is mainly what we were focused on. Yeah. The innermost the most intense, intense inside group. They're spiritual warriors. Yeah. They're spirit, they are a vanguard of spiritual revolutionaries. Um, and the question that you have to ask yourself is, if you truly believed that it was in your hands to revolutionize the planet in such a way that insanity, war, crime would all be eradicated, what would you not be willing to do? Are they coming after you now that you're finished? Not as far as I know, but I do know that, I mean, I'm a little bit paranoid. Um, you know, if something happens, I sometimes think. I'll give you an example. On the day that we were showing our film in New York, I, um, I opened my emails and then it wouldn't open. And then it said, there's a problem with your account. Someone's trying to get in. Um, please change your password because there's unauthorized activity. That made me suspicious. The other thing that's weird about that is that's only ever happened to me once before, and the other time it happened 
when I was, was when I was in Clearwater, Florida, the spiritual mecca of Scientology, I got a message from my email saying, you can't get into your emails because someone else is trying to get in and it's someone in Clearwater trying to access your emails. So is it me being paranoid or were the Scientologists trying to get into my emails? What do you think? I don't know. I guess we'll never know.